You're listening to the Behind the Ears Podcast, because everybody does Disney differently. The Behind the Ears Podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. Do you want to save around 40% off Disney's prices for deluxe on-property accommodations? Contact dvc-rental.com. They help out Disney Vacation Club owners rent out points that they're not going to use. These points mean savings for you on your next trip at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. The DVC member books everything in your name, just like any other reservation. And if you ever decide that you want to become a DVC member, you can check out our sister company, buyandselldvc.com. As a licensed realtor, they sell DVC contracts for members at a savings of 30 to 40% off Disney's prices. And if you're looking to sell your contract, buyandselldvc.com has one of the industry's lowest commissions at only 6.5%. Again, that's dvc-rental.com for your rental needs and buyandselldvc.com to buy or sell into the Disney Vacation Club at a large discount. And make sure you tell them that the Behind Ears podcast crew sent you. Attention, wizards and witches. The Expedition Roasters Head Roastmaster is pleased to announce the release of four new wizarding brews. Are you charming and courageous? Book smart and brilliant? Big hearted and kind? Or possibly cunning and ambitious? You may have to try all four to find out which house roast you belong to. So cast a transporting spell over to ExpeditionRoasters.com to begin your journey. And don't forget to continue your adventure with our large selection of pop culture-inspired themed coffees. There's always an adventure in every bag. Behind the Ears podcast fans, be sure to use the code EARS20 for 20% off your first order. That's E-A-R-S-2-0 at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. <laughs> Yellow. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny. <laughs> there goes Bob. <laughs> that was Mr. Chris. Sir, how are you doing on this Friday Eve? Oh, and before you say hello, I'd like to wish everybody a happy November 1st. Let's put up our Christmas tree and Christmas lights because Disney did it so we can do it. National holiday. Sir, how are you? I'm doing fine, but I probably won't put up Christmas stuff until after the like first of December, maybe, maybe Thanksgiving. I don't know. Well, that's that's because you're not Disney. Well, I may put lights up, but I may not turn them on yet. Well, you always, I mean, especially where we both live, we live in different regions of the country, but climate-wise, we tend to experience similar. Um, Let's just say forces of nature. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. You know, so better to get that up while it's just freezing cold instead of, oh my god, I've got a um, an icicle coming from my nose today. Oh my gosh! You know, the thing is, it's been rather nice. In fact, yesterday being Halloween, the, the very interesting part to it is that like it's usually relatively cold and rainy, icky, blah blah blah. Yesterday was really nice and like I was sitting outside without a jacket on. I was still kind of cold, but I had a fire going in a small fire pit in my driveway. We had a couple cobblers going and some Dutch ovens. Oh yeah. It was, Oh, uh, sampling some, I had a, I had a bobble bottle, bobble. <laughs> there you go. A bottle of pumple bee beer. Never heard of it. It is because it's made by a microbrew. It's not even for sale yet. It's kind of one of those things where I am, I was acting as a Guinea pig and it was pumpkin, apple, 
and honey flavored beer. Really, really good. Almost tasted like a hard cider. Not quite. Very, very tasty. Uh, whereas really, I really enjoyed it. Only had one because it was a little bit potent, but it was, but, uh, it was, it was good. Yeah. And, and so it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Hope you had a good one too. We had a lots of ghouls and goblins come by our place and eat all the candy. Lots of candy, lots and lots of candy, but that's not why you guys are here. You don't care about our days. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't, but I'm going to, I'm going to just for the, the, the sake of the show, pretend like you don't, we're going to do an interesting show. So this was originally supposed to be Tuesday show, but we decided uh, due to mischief night, it just all fell out perfectly we decided to flip-flop shows. So tonight we're going to talk about mistakes, not just in your planning of the vacation, but what you do during your vacation. And Chris kind of coined this show as learn from the fail of others. Um, We have a list, things that other people have brought to our attention, um, things that we've noticed, whether it be people in our community, people on our show, or other groups and other people we've encountered uh, along the way of doing Disney, um, and also just some of our own. We will only for my Chris, my Chris, only for Chris and myself will we use our names. Everybody else will just stay anonymous. This is not a show. So if we if we tell a story and it, it feels like it's your story, it probably is. It's not to offend anybody. It is to solely be a training purpose so you all could learn so you don't make these foolish mistakes. Yeah, and, you know, I'll be honest with you. This this was inspired... Um this was inspired by you know some true life adventures at Disney are actually going on right now as we speak and I actually asked this particular person I said hey would you be offended if we kind of did this kind of a show because we think it would really be helpful and they're like no that's cool uh, we we get it I'm like they were really cool sports about it and they're awesome people anyway so I thought Danny what we can do is why don't we start this off we go we go as with as with any trip, we start with planning, then go to traveling, and then go to, you know, if you really get technical, trip execution. You know, actually doing the trip. Um, I'm going to kind of start this off. Um, one of the things that I have heard in the past, you know, you always see people say, well, how much does it cost to go on a Disney vacation? And you can't just ask that question. It's a blanket question. You just can't. It just doesn't work that well. Um but it brings up the idea of budgeting. And the way that I like to think of this is that, what's the best way of putting it? Planning a Disney vacation for a budgetary purpose is kind of like doing a kitchen remodel. You have some really good ideas. You have an idea of how much it's going to cost, but it usually it usually ends up costing twice as much and takes twice as long, meaning it's going to cost you twice as much for your Disney vacation, and you usually end up staying longer than you originally anticipated in the first place. Some people say, that's not a bad thing. Well, you know, the thing is, it may not be a bad thing, but can you afford it? And one of the first mistakes is to plan out a trip that's either A, not the wrong, not the, not the right length, or B, not within a reasonable budget. And um, that's going to vary depending on person. That's going to vary depending on how you want to do Disney um, and how many people are in your party. How are you going to get there? But we're going to get to the transportation part in a minute. Um, so my advice along these lines is that before you go gung ho on, you know, solidifying your trip, figure how much you have to budget for, you know, think about how much that trip could cost you. What can you do within that budget? And then if it changes, think to yourself, okay, if my budget, if I need to get this much more in my budget, what, what has to change? What will change? How can I keep my trip within my budget and do what you can to stay within your budget? I guarantee you, if you stay within your budget, when you come home, no matter what you spent, at least you know that, um, at least, at least you know that it's going to be all good and you've got it all budgeted and you're not going to have to worry about, you know, a huge gigantic bill at the end. And how are you going to pay for it? Cause you already got the cash, man. You already got the cash. 
So, Danny, that's my that's my first fail slash betterment tip. Well, how many rides do you think is inside Magic Kingdom? Rides or attractions? Or just ride and attractions. Probably around 45. I always thought it was something like, I thought it was like 43 or something like that. Okay. Well, let, let's low ball here and let's say 40. Okay. Because I didn't feel like Googling it. So let's call it 40. Okay. Okay. Here, here's the biggest mistake is I'll, I'm going to almost piggyback off of what you just said. Okay. I just spent $7,000 on a vacation and I walked in the Magic Kingdom and I was there for nine hours and I rode three rides or I rode five rides or I rode seven rides. And you're looking around saying, man, that was a lot of money. And I just spent the entire day on, you know, waiting online and dealing with mobs and strollers. You know, Disney's just not for me. Right. Well, here, here's where you went wrong. You have to have an honest expectation that obviously, depending on what time of year you go with crowd levels and everything along that lines, understand that you're not going to be able to do every attraction there is. You're just not. So you, especially that say you're a family that doesn't go as often, but you are, you're a diehard Disney fan. You watch podcasts, you, you do it all. And you're like, you know what? We, we go every three years. You make that priority list of what needs to get seen or what you need to ride and almost number them so then you can make your fast passes accordingly and then because we'll do a whole tip on fast passes later but make categorize what you want done because if you can go in you have these six rides you need to get done and somehow you get off eight rides in 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 an entire day from open to close it will be a very you'll fulfill what you wanted. You know, if you walk in the park and you have that list, but you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go run over here. I'm going to run over there. And you're going to walk out. And what's going to happen? You're going to turn around and be like, oh, man, what an unsuccessful day. My tip would be just make sure you're hitting what you want to hit and have the honest expectation of I'm only going to do X amount of rides in a day. And if I hit A, B, and C on the back end, well, that was a successful day. It you know take into account things go down crowd levels I get all that I mean there's been times I've been inside the parks and I've hit four or five rides in a day and people will be like that's astonishing like that that's so little when there's so many attractions but you only have X amount of fast passes and you know if you use certain fast passes for different situations you're gonna handcuff yourself and we're gonna get into that in a little bit but just have honest expectations on what you're going to accomplish in a day. I think that makes a lot of sense because I think that goes hand in hand with how long of a trip do you really want to to budget for and schedule for time-wise? Because if you want to really focus on doing a lot of attractions that you haven't done before, especially if you haven't been there in a long time, you're going to need more time. And the last thing you really want to do is jam, jam, jam. I know a lot of people do it. We used to do it, but it's it's a mistake. I'll be honest with you. The f- I don't know how my daughter dealt with, you know, rope drop to kicking us out when she was a little girl. I don't understand it. My son never tolerated it. Still doesn't tolerate it. But you got to so that, therefore you got to plan your trips out. So, you know, you can enjoy yourselves. Um yeah, I I totally get it. Um so let's let's talk about let's talk about this and this is the pre planning bit this is the you know before you actually get going um i know you and i may have some differences of opinion on this one but um basically you have it's two parts to dining plan or not to dining plan but also hand in hand with what do you want to do for dining. And some people think that you can go and just do dining willy nilly and you don't have to plan out your dining. And to some extent, you're right. To some extent may not be so correct. And what I'm kind of getting at is if you end up deciding that the dining plan is going to be right for you, and it is something that you have to plan and budget for, in my opinion, you better make sure that if you have the standard dining plan or deluxe dining plan, that you are also planning out those ADRs for those sit-down dine- sit eateries. 
because if you well, you can't just walk up and get a reservation. Well, I suppose if you're Uncle Danny, you can. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, I can't tell you how many times people would go on a complete rant on some Disney pages saying that I had a dining plan that I paid for and I booked my trip two months before I left and no one told me that I had to have ADRs to go to the simplest eatery, you know, you know, table service eatery at Walt Disney world. I was really upset in this, that, and the other. Okay. That's a fail. Because yep. you're right, no one, no one's going to tell you that unless you do a little bit of research on it. And the, you know, the, the problem of it is, is that seriously, if you want to eat at a table service restaurant, do yourself a favor, get the ADR for that particular place. Book as soon as you can. You, you know, book at that that six month mark. Simple as that. Even if even if you okay. change your change your your ideas of what you want to do. You, you just can't do it. And it makes it even more important if you have a dining plan, whether or not it's free, which is really free, or whether or not you've paid for it out of pocket. It's, you know, simple as that. That's, that's a fail. Learn from it. Plan out that dining. It's going to make you a happier camper. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, put your phones down. Not right now. Please don't do that. We need you to keep watching. Um, when you're in the parks, uh, not everything needs to be caught on camera. N- nine times out of ten, do you really rewatch it? Like, you know how many times I've recorded wishes? Do you know how many times I've rewatched wishes? Not many. You know, you know how many times I've been on a ride and I've recorded it? And this is all pre podcast, of course. Um, how many times I've been on a ride? I'm like, oh, this is great. I've never rewatched that nonsense. Taking pictures is wonderful. You want to capture the memories you know, for a long time to come and share it with your kids and their kids and their kids. And it may make, Hey, they look good in picture frames on your wall, but don't miss the simple things because you're glued to your phone. Listen, we all love Facebook. We all love Instagram and whatever other, you know, social media sites you're on. Do you really need to be, I'm, I'm not telling you don't look at them. I'm not trying to be like the Neo, you know, like, Nope, don't do it. No, I'm telling you, just enjoy yourself. You know, if you're in line with your family and you want to check your phone for a few minutes, fine. But also converse with them. You know, some of my best memories with my family and my friends have been standing in line, playing heads up. Um, I was going to say. <laughs> it's a great game. It's, it's, it's literally, it should be like the Disney line game. And, and you, do, um, you do know that if you check in while, you know, while playing it, while at Disney, You'll get a special Disney card pack for free. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and and you get to keep it. Even if you can still play it later, even if you're not at the parks. If you have oh, to, cool. but you have to you have to do it while you're you know, got your GPS you know location yeah. services on while it's there. I didn't know that the first time I played it, and then like last summer I downloaded it, and it was it was quite a big download. I'll let you know that right now. But I was like, yes, and that is a great game because it's Disney themed. You get to interact as a family, and it's a whole lot of fun. Anyway, sorry. I mean, I was given I was given the gift of gab, as my mother would say. No. I will literally, I, you know, I could talk to a wall. You know, I I I could sell snow to a snowman. Um, I get in line, and I'll talk to anybody and everybody. I don't care unless I'm hungry. Then that, then or if it's Peter Pan, I've been waiting for three hours. I won't really talk to many people. But um, you know, just. In, embrace that you're in disney you don't need to know what billy bob down the street is doing you could figure that out when you're in your room later and everybody's sleeping you know what i mean just i'm not saying don't indulge in things and don't you know you don't have to radically change how you are but just be conscious of your screen time while you're there yeah i would have to agree i mean it's one of the things that i know i try to put my phone down a lot in fact i usually keep my phone in my camera case I do carry my camera with me. You know, I have a DSLR and I have a a special hand strap that I could just basically attach it to my hand. I love taking pictures. That is my thing. The thing is, I'm glad I have a piece of equipment where I can snap a couple quick pictures within a couple, you know, a couple, five seconds. Boom. I'm done. I put my camera down and I enjoy the rest of it. You know, it's kind of like I see a parade coming. I'll take a few pictures of each scene and I'll enjoy the rest of it and dance and, be with my family and, and, and sing along and have a lot of fun. 
you know, and then next scene comes around, few pictures, done. It just makes it a whole lot more enjoyable for me. I, but Danny, you're right. I used to do a lot of videotaping. I used to do a lot of, you know, recording. Um, and I love the recordings I have. They're all on Blu-ray. You know, it's kind of cool. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. It's, it's total high def eye candy. And especially when you have a good camera like I have, but the fact of the matter is I don't do it much anymore. I don't, in fact, the last couple of trips I've, I've not even taken my camcorder. Um, just because I've kind of changed to, you know, something that takes less time out of my, um, you know, out of my experience and that is photography and I love it and I'm getting my, my kids are into it too now. So it's it's a lot more enjoyable. We're doing it as a family, and that's one thing that I can say. Um, is that all you wanted to mention about that? Yeah, my dance. Okay. I don't want to nail him. You know, keep so, talking about him. So here's the thing. Here's the next one that I think people. This is more of a preference item, but sometimes you have to make a couple mistakes in order for. You have to make a couple of mistakes in order to really get this. I realize that there's not a lot of people that do as much traveling as like I do. You know, I've got a half a million miles, uh, you know, on American and other airlines and stuff like that. Um, so I do a lot of travel. And that means that I know how to get through security lickety split. I know what it's like to squeeze my butt in one of those seats. I know what it means to, I know what it means when the flight attendants say, put your bag in the overhead compartment in wheels first. So, you know, here's, here's my, here's my thing and learn from some of the first fails I had. One, if you're, no matter if you, if you have your bag or you check your bag, one thing that you really should do is put a sheet of paper in your, in the very top of your luggage. So if someone opens it, that's the first thing they see and has your name, phone number, address, where are you going to be at what dates and your home address? And you have it there for your flight going down and your flight coming back. Why? Because if for some reason your luggage goes somewhere else on a vacation by itself, one of the things they're going to ask you is, can you, can you identify what is in your luggage? And I'm like, Close. I mean, clothes, dirty underwear, uh, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, what I like, what I, what I do this and I basically say in the very top is an information sheet that has where that luggage should be on which dates do that because, okay. what, because the first, okay. One of my first business trips, in fact, I think it wasn't my very first business trip. One of my very first business trips. And this was in the early nineties. Um, I had to go on a, I had to go meet a customer. My luggage never left Chicago. Yep. I did a business deal wearing wearing a pair of black jeans and a t-shirt. Hey, unless you had black jeans on, you weren't wearing like pajama pants. Very true. Very true. But the fact of the matter is, it's like I had to start it off with funny thing happened the way to Atlanta today. And uh, it was just, it was just really, it was just really crazy. So do that. And that way, if for some reason, your luggage does get misplaced. And they do look inside. That's the first thing that they can do is say, oh, this belongs to Chris. He's supposed to be here. We better get it to him. And we'll put your flight, <laughs> put your flight information on it too. It really does help. So that, I, I will say that, that, was that a really a fail of mine? No, but I had to learn from that. Um, and I do that now for pretty much all my itineraries, um, if, whether or not it's business or pleasure, just because if the stuff hits the fan, I know that that luggage will eventually get to me because it is the re the airport uh, airline's responsibility to deliver it to you if it doesn't get to the airport. I will actually piggyback you there and say luggage can go missing at any time. True. Um, and I'm more speaking of day one when you get on that plane, you are heading to Disney. Mm -hmm. Never think that your luggage is going to get there. You know, expect the worst, hope for the best. True. Um, Always, they give you a free bag, a personal bag. Now, women, if you have a purse, maybe change it up a little bit, but have a backpack or a duffel bag, something, something that you can carry that's considered your personal item. Pack a change of clothes. I like to put a change of clothes, my toothbrush, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, some deodorant, any medication, mm -hmm. 
mm. goes in there. Uh, if you wear glasses, contact solution, um, whatever. Whatever you think is necessity. So if, God forbid, outside of numerous days of clothes, if, God forbid, you lose your, if the airport loses your luggage, airline, excuse me, airline loses your luggage, what happens? You can at least have the essentials. You could still brush your teeth. You could still put on deodorant. You could still put glasses on or contacts on, take your medication, put it all in a book bag. Because when you get to the hotel, say it's not there. Maybe it's delayed. Maybe it missed the plane. Maybe it's just lost. But you're like, man, I really want to go to the park. But maybe you left New Jersey and it was 18 degrees and snowing. So you've got a jacket, hat, gloves, jeans, and a sweatshirt on. Too cold to go into Orlando. So you always bring bring that pair of shorts and a t-shirt where you can say, you know what? All right, I'm just going to leave my book. I'm going to get changed, leave my book bag at Bell Service, and I'm going to go to the park. And I'm not going to worry. I'm on vacation. Disney will contact you when everything's found. The airlines will contact you at least for the next few hours. Let's go to the park, relax, and we know that if we have to sleep the, this way tonight, at least we're set. Yeah, I definitely have to say that the whole idea about having your prescription drugs with you and even some over-the-counter drugs that you really you know use, like say allergy meds, you know, because I, especially in the summertime, you know, I'm an Allegra fan. Um, those those are things that you'd never check. I'm going to tell you that right now. You never check any prescription or non-prescription meds that are that are vital um just don't keep it with you at all times i'm going to piggyback on that one bit as well um don't carry scratch that don't pack any important documentation in your luggage. um great example um i do know of a person that um packed their marriage license in with their luggage mm. and because mm. because they um one of the things is that they didn't have uh when they when they when they did the reservation it was under um that person's maiden name and they needed to prove that they are married because they got their license changed and everything so, the, you know, obviously things didn't quite correspond to one another. So they brought their marriage license because that's usually how, you know, you prove, hey, this is who I was. This is who I am. Who I am. You know, that sort of thing. In fact, my, my wife and I actually did that, too, when we first got married. And as a matter of fact, when we got married, I made sure that her plane ticket, her part of the, of the reservation, um, the car rental, because I couldn't rent a car yet. I wasn't old enough. And... Um, long story and uh so all those things had to be under her maiden name because her driver's license was all going to be under her maiden name so but we still carried a copy of the, of the marriage license and everything else marriage or you know certificate whatever and that's just one of those things you just got to keep with you same thing if don't pack your passport don't pack your driver's license don't pack your insurance card you need all that you do but the thing but i'm just saying it's like just don't. I mean, have it on something that's going to be on you all the time. Um, some of, I say don't. I say don't pack your passport because it's like sometimes I would travel. I would carry my passport with me, even though I'm not traveling internationally. I would yeah. carry it as a secondary piece. But you know, make cop photocopies of those items as well. I'm granted it's not exactly the most legit thing, but in a jam, you have those things handy, especially like you know health insurance cards or things like that. Um, just don't pack important documentation in your luggage. Um, so let's let's also talk a little bit about what to do in the event that your luggage does go wrong. Um, first things first. Um, if for some reason you're picking up your luggage and you you know, find out your luggage didn't make it, I'll tell you right now. Just get, let everybody know because not everybody knows this. There is usually some sort of a luggage handling center or office at the airport for the airline. You go, you talk to them. You know how when you check your luggage, you get those little square tags that has the numbers and stuff on them? They're going to need those, so don't, don't lose those at all. And talk to them about your bags and where you're going to be and so on. Best thing to do, though, stay calm. I know that it's one of those things where you can totally go off because, you know, airline lost luggage somewhere. I mean, I'll yeah. admit it. 
the airline lost my luggage coming home from my trip with my family. But you know what? I know something. They did me a solid. They took care of it. And I got my luggage when they said I was going to get my luggage. Okay. That's all I cared about. I mean, you know, one of those things. But just make sure that you know where the luggage handling, handling office is for your airline at the airport you're going to be at. If for some reason it's missing and Disney misses it, misses it, loses it, they'll take care of it. But you still need those tags and so on and so forth. I also take a picture of my... Magical, Ex- not Magical Express. Yeah, my Magical Express luggage tags, the yellow tags that you put on your luggage. I take a picture of those so I can get not only the number but the barcode um, on them as well. And I just keep that on my phone. I do a lot of t- I do a lot of things taking pictures of, with my phone just to show I have this that, and the other. Now, Mister Chris. Yes. Say you get on your plane. Yes. The luggage goes on the right plane. You get off that plane, and the luggage is there. Everything goes good. Yes. Now, say you check into a hotel. Yes. And you're at Disney, mm-hmm. and you're you got your luggage with you. Mm-hmm. But then two days later, you need to transfer to a new hotel ah, on yes. Disney property. A split stay. What happens? How's the process of getting them the luggage? And what is the result if Disney loses said luggage? You know, that's a really good thing. And Danny is actually. You know, mentioning this because of a real life incident that recently happened that people told us about. So here's the deal. This is how you are supposed to do a resort transfer. Basically, you take your either a you take your luggage to Bell Services, or b you arrange to have them come pick it up with you in the room. Okay, you have them pick it up. You go down to Bell Services. They will give you a, a, a tag, like a claim, t- claim tag, showing that um, it has your name on it and it's going to this particular resort. Okay? They will put on there another transfer tag. Again, it's a, probably be a, a different color. Have your name on it, what resort you're going to. And... What happened is that they were given wrong information. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not necessarily the fault of this couple. I think they were given wrong information because they were told to leave their luggage in the room. And I'm like, whoa, 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 time out. What? It's best to make sure that you make sure that luggage gets to Bell Services because then you know you have a tag in hand. They didn't have a tag. They didn't have any kind of a claim check, which, you know, and by the way, Jessica, not all tags are blue. Some tags are different colors. Just to let you know that because just put on there said the tag was blue. Um, and I know that because of how ours tra- our transfers went. So here's the thing. They were given wrong information. I really felt bad for them because they had no way to track the bag. Why? They didn't have a tag. Um, Disney did eventually find it and Disney uh, it never left their it never left their original resort, which I think it was kind of a bummer, but make sure you get it to bell services. They'll take care of it for you. It does take several hours to get it to the other resort. So you better make sure that you've got everything you need out of it for the day. Uh, Cause you could check in that luggage at eight o'clock in the morning. It may not get over to the resort until four o'clock in the afternoon. That's what happened with us is that I thought it would, they're like, oh, it'll be there by like two o'clock in the afternoon. So three o'clock comes around. Oh, yeah, we don't have your luggage yet. It didn't get here. So four or five o'clock finally came around. Okay, we got our luggage. No big deal. But the thing of it is, is that it takes a long time to get it moved over. So don't expect it to be lickety split or follow you over. Um, but it shouldn't take like let's say 15 hours. No, it should not take 15 hours. I mean again, you know, it was one of those cases where there was a lot of mix-ups that happened and I hate to say it, it was kind of on it was kind of it was kind of on Disney's fault this time. But you know what? The manager that helped this this couple out, um I think he did the right thing. He he went over to that other resort, he found the bags and brought them over himself. And you know, it wasn't his fault, but he made it right. And that that overall, that was good, but it did cause a lot of stress. And we really felt bad for this particular couple. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll keep this open to do it again with maybe some of these other tips in mind. Because um, I think I think doing split stays are fun. Um, now, I 
I've done it. La- I did it last year going between Animal Kingdom Lodge and Art of Animation. It worked out just fine. Oh, by mm-hmm. the way, to pick up your bags, they won't deliver them to you. You have to go to Bell Services. And you can either have Bell Services, you know, help you with them to your room, or you take them there and take them up to your room yourself. So they, it won't be like DME, where all of a sudden your bags will magically appear again. You have to go get them. So just kind of keep that in mind. Most of the, I mean, as I said, I've only had, a, I've only done tr- one, uh, transfer a couple times because of the times that I've flown. All the other times, you know, I'm there. I throw them in the back of this truck one. We drive over. It's no big deal, but still. So that's, that's that. Um, I wanted to go back a little bit to the, to the travel bit. There's a couple of things, okay. a couple of things I wanted to mention. First off, learn from my fail, personal fail. First off, I want to say that five hour energy drinks. Oh boy. Don't always last five hours. So if you think that you're going to be able to drive 24 hours straight from your point A to Disney, and you're going to drive all through the night, and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to slam five-hour energy, I beg you to reconsider. Because sometimes... So slam three of them was what you're saying. No. You know, <laughs> I, it, was, it was hilarious. The first time we did it, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this. And it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a five hour energy, take a five hour energy. I get that little bit of a rush. I'm like, okay, da, 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 da. And after about, you know, five minutes, da, 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 should have had a Red Bull. Oh, oh I hate Red Bull. Oh. With a little splash of like cranberry. No. Oh my god. And vodka. Not while I'm driving. <laughs> Dude. Just a little. No. No. Behind this podcast is not endorsed drunk driving. No, it doesn't endorse drinking and driving, period. So um wait till that lawyer calls us again. Um <laughs> so you know, you might think, oh, we're just going to go ahead and do it. We're going to switch, you know, we're going to switch out drivers and stuff like that. You know, you might be able to do it, but I just want to say and, and really encourage safety while driving. Um, you know, I've seen my fair share of accidents um, out while on the road, while going to and from Disney, and they are scarier than hell. I'm going to, I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's, just, it's nothing will wake you up faster than watching a loaded SUV cross two lanes of traffic because they, you know, someone needed to make a pee break and they go over to the exit of a rest area and go into that turn way too fast and flip it. And you, you see something like that and you're like, no, no. So, you know, you you wonder how they flipped the Chevy Impala. I still am trying to figure out how Honda Civic. You're like, what? (laughs) How in the world did they flip a Chevy Impala on top of its roof over near over near Disney Springs? How in the world did they do? I looked at my wife. I'm like, there's no how. How do you? do I literally think we all have seen at one point or another at Disney a Chevy Impala flipped. Yeah, and it's always like, why is it always the Chevy Impala? How do you do this? And I own a Chevy Impala, so it's it's one of those cases where it's like, I'm sorry, it's one of the most stable vehicles in the world. You really gotta have a you know cranium and rectum syndrome in order to uh, you know do something that stupid. But the fact of the matter is, is that plan your travel, plan your travel out, plan for breaks, plan for a cheap motel or something like that. Um. Do what you got to do to be safe. Now, mm-hmm. t- taking that into consideration, you know, I know that we're all trying to do Disney at the most inexpensive ways, but don't. This is one of those cases where we now purposely stop uh, during our trip, and we split it kind of like into one one part of our trip is two thirds the length, the other part is the one third, and uh, it works out fine for us. But whatever you do, you know, be safe. Don't you know? Try to have more time in your travel plans just so that you keep your family safe. So Mm -hmm. just kind of keep that in mind. Same thing for going back, because I'll be honest with you for us, we go through some mountains. I don't like doing mountains at night because I can't see where I'm going. And, um, I feel like in order to best maintain control, I need to see where that turn is at the bottom of the hill. And so, 
Not to mention that the first time we first time we did that, Kathy was behind the wheel of Diz Truck One, and um, let's just say that when we came back home, Diz Truck One needed new brakes. <laughs> I, I wish I could joke around about it, but it was after that I upgraded the whole brakes, all the all the braking system, <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about it later. Anyway, just take your time with travel. Um, so, Danny. What else, like what happens on some of the things like when you're there actually executing your vacation, what are some of the bonehead moves have you done? Um, when, when doing fast passes, we all get excited. Uh, yeah. Consult a travel agent, consult a podcaster, consult your friend that goes to Disney all the time. Do your research on your own as well, but understand that not all nighttime spectac- spectaculars need a fast pass. Um, you do not need a fast pass for illuminations. I promise you. And more than likely at eight 30, you could probably still snag an illuminations one. If you really want it, um, learn what needs a fast pass and what does not need a fast pass. And once you can kind of gauge that, Be honest with yourself about arriving and where you want to be at times and things like that. And understand, if you are there for rope drop and your first fast pass is in Tomorrowland and you want to run over to Adventureland because there's something you want to ride, understand you are now on the opposite side of the park. So you're going to be running back and forth trying to catch stuff. My biggest tip is don't, don't, pick all over the place pick in a circle always do the parks in a circle if it if possible this is all if possible if you can't you grab what you can um always 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 bump them up there's one hour window so if you have your first fast pass at 12 you cannot book your next fast pass until technically 101 okay but always bump those three up because for whatever reason say you have Toy Story, Haunted Mansion, and Splash. So you're kind of going in the circle, right? But when you get done with Haunted Mansion, Splash is not ready for another 20 minutes. You might walk by Hall of Presence and be able to sneak that in. That's why you always want to go in that circle and keep things moving. Now with that, when you get to your third Fast Pass... Once you swipe that first entry into the fast pass line, you can now bid on your next one. Well, bid, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can now go out and grab your next fast pass, that fourth rolling fast pass you get. Yes, there's a lot of people don't realize that after three, you have a continuous one. Uh, same rules. It, you, you know, you only have one and it has to be, you know, w- our window because you can only book one at a time. So it doesn't really matter at that point but make sure the minute you go in there look at your watch so you your fast pass is at 3 30 you were there exactly at 3 30 as soon as you swipe in that fast pass is gone you have now done your three even though you have not ridden that attraction yet so go ahead on your you know my disney experience app and go grab that fourth one also be mindful where you are you know if you're at splash try not to go back to tomorrowland you know if at all possible, you know, keep things rolling. Um, my next biggest thing is unless you really want a nighttime spectacular, say you really want Fantasmic, you want Rivers of Light, I would I would try to talk to you talk you out of it. But here's the tip: because if you if you take that and say it's your third one, your first doesn't matter. If, you don't get that rolling fourth one. You see what I'm saying? Like if your fast passes were twelve to one. 101, you know, 130 to 230, and then your next fast pass is at 830. That means that whole gap during the day, you are either hopefully maybe getting stuck on a ride where you get a free fast pass of paper. Uh, maybe you have a nice cast member who's handing one out, or you are stuck and waiting in lines all day. Now, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You know, there's a lot of people that are like, hey, I come into the park, I run around for a little bit, then I have my fast pass, I'm going to get lunch, then I'm going to go back to the hotel, hang out, and then I'll come back to the park, wait online a little bit, and then have my nighttime spectacular. That's perfectly fine if that, once once again, it goes back to our saying, everybody does Disney differently. But most people who do not get to travel as often as Chris or myself do, you're only there either once a year, once every couple years, you're more than likely, unless you have small children, not going to take that break in the middle of the day. 
So you're going to be staying in the park. So I'm just trying to help you guys avoid putting, you're going to do a lot of miles in Disney. I'm trying to save those dogs on your legs, those puppies. You're going to do a lot of miles. You know, Don't do unnecessary miles. You know, you make a, you can make a good point, especially about the spectaculars. So here's here's what I like to do. And I've done this both for Illuminations and for Rivers of Light. And that is, I get one of the dining packages. And uh, like, um, well, like the one time that you and I met, we went and had um, brunch over at Tusker House, and it was a uh, part of the part of the um, Rivers of Light package, and it cost us a couple bucks more. It was very very small incremental, but I basically had a fast pass for Rivers of Light that night, and I didn't have to worry about taking up um, another fast pass. And if you want to eat at one of the places at you know those particular parks that offer such a thing, it can be a nice offering. I happen to love Tusker House. Um, you know, it's just one of those cases. I've done it for um, uh, Fantasmic, uh, for, uh, where did we have? It was over at Mama, Mama Melrose's. Uh, and I think I've also done it when it was Hollywood, not Hollywood, yeah, Hollywood and Vine. Yeah, as well. And it, it tends to work out for us. It worked out really well for us. So, um that's that's my little addendum to what you mentioned there. Um, so my next item, and I realize, man, the time is already starting to fly. Yeah. yeah so here's here's my big thing. Um, it's kind of funny lately. I don't know if you've seen this, Danny, but there have been a lot of people talking about you know the prices of water and the prices of soda, and I don't know if I can stress this enough. People who do not hydrate are the ones that are going to feel the most miserable. They're the ones that are going to feel sick. And when you don't feel right at Disney, nothing else goes right. And, and the reason why I say it is like this. Even now that we're approaching the winter months, fall and winter months, yes, it can still get nicely warm in Florida. Um, it could even be nicely warm in California for that matter. But here's the deal. You still have to be hydrated. You will still need that extra hydration to come in because you're going to be walking around. You're going to be sweating. You may not be sweating as much, but you're still going to be doing it. And at the same time, you still need to eat right. So you need to make sure you hydrate properly while you do that. If you if you don't like to pay five bucks for a bottle of water or whatever it is, Hey, I still say go get a cup of free ice water from from any of the quick service places. Um, they are more than welcome to, they're more than happy to have you do it. You're more than welcome to it. I think in most cases the water tastes fine. You know, it's not. Oh yeah, I think it's delicious. I don't think it's any problem. You know, but you know, as it gets cooler, like you know, hey, I've been I've been to Disney winter time, December time frame, where it was downright cold. But yeah, last October was freezing. Yeah, you still need to hydrate. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Also, I'll throw this in as a, as a quick thing. Even though it may be cooler, you still need sunscreen. You can, you know, you can still get sunburnt when it's cooler outside. I'm just saying. So that baby oil, you get that Uncle Danny tan going, dude. Ick. Yuck. <laughs> Not my fault you turn red. I know. I look at a picture of the sun and I, I get some. You know, it's, <laughs> it, it's a truth. I mean, seriously, I'm whiter than sour cream. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things. It's pretty bad. So one of the mistakes people have made is to say, you know, I'm going to go broke buying water. You know what? We also carry little flavor packets, little like crystal light flavor, flavor packets or whatever. And you just, you know, we just refill our cups with the filtered water that we get from quick service places. If we want something flavorful, we'll put some lemonade packet in it or a mango packet in it. Or you even make ones that have iced tea. And, you know, you do that. But the fact of the matter is, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. You don't have to go broke to hydrate. So, there you go. What's next? I, I I can't think of any more. You know what? Why don't we go ahead? And- oh, you know what? I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think I'm, I'm going to make sure we covered all the ones that our listeners posted over on the WD- WDW community page as well as the Behind Your Podcast Facebook page. So go ahead and I'll make sure we hit everything. Okay. All right. So 
Disney food's not always great. We get it. You know, there's not a lot of foliage in the park. A lot of hamburgers and chicken fingers and hot dogs, pretzels and popcorn. No one's saying don't indulge. Have a blast. Go bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. How many of you just sung that song? You're welcome. Um, <laughs> eat out a little bit. Don't eat that garbage pasta from Pop Century. <clears throat> Jessica. Um, <laughs> go out and have a nice meal at Boathouse. Go out and have a nice meal at Homecoming. Go out and get the pork shoulder from um, Polite Pig. Um, don't eat at Planet Hollywood. Don't eat at Hard. Uh, what's the other one? I don't know. Jimmy or Rudy is not here to make fun of Planet Hollywood. For that. Planet Rainforest Cafe. Don't. And when you go out, try. I don't know. To me, I'm a big person, especially if you're in Epcot. Don't get things you know you like. And I understand, Danny, it's very expensive. I get it. But this is the place to learn it because you know it's going to be done right. Uh, you know it's going to be cooked properly. You know it's going to be as authentic as it could be inside our country. Um, just just enjoy yourselves. Um, try different foods. Eat diff- Even if it's not different, try to eat a little bit, I don't want to say healthier, more exotic than a hamburger all the time. Yeah. You know, Magic Kingdom, you don't have much of an option. I get it. But when you're in Epcot, like it boggles my mind when I see someone having chicken fingers in Epcot. I'm like, do, do you know what's right over that little bridge over there? You literally have numerous countries, plenty of options, and you're sitting here eating uh, chicken fingers. Boggles my mind. Oh, and last thing, don't eat Disney pizza, people. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? All right. I got to I have to have pictures sent to me of someone eating some disgusting pasta from Pop Century. I got someone else sending me a picture of Pizza Fari the other day. I got one of the girls in the community showing off she's drinking Starbucks. Are you guys trying to kill me? Do you want me to Is this what this is? Stop eating this crap and drinking this crap. For holy moly, go get yourself a cronut. Have yourself a Joffrey's. And have a good day. What did we miss? All, all I know is I do try to eat different things while I'm down there. I try to eat different places and I try to things that I wouldn't normally try. I do have my favorites. I still love myself some cosmic rays. I do like going to the electric umbrella. You know, as I said, I, I love going to, um, I love going to places that I, that I've been to in a while and I try to space them out a little bit. I love Tusker house. That place is awesome. Um, I still have some places that I really want to try. Like example, I know it sounds silly because it's a steakhouse, right? I tried um, the 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 Osman Steakhouse for the first time last summer. I'm going back because it was so stinking good. Yes, it, I'm missing an arm and a leg because it cost that much. But the fact of the matter is, it, hands down, it had to be the best steak I've ever had. And so, you know... You sometimes you just treat yourself to a little bit of an indulgent, and um, it's. It, I will definitely try it again. I'll try. So I'll try something different there, but I will definitely go back. I need to touch on something because the three knuckleheads at Art of Animation right now want to talk some junk. How's Tangerine Cafe? Listen, I said try to eat different things. I didn't say completely abandon the things you love. Not my bad. Not my fault that Raquel and I forgot the other dude's name, but they hooked me up at Tangerine Cafe. I get the beef and the lamb. Yeah, I might eat the same thing all the time when I'm there. I try other things. Okay. So go back. You sound, you sound so dramatic, man. I mean, we're at pop smarty pants. Well, your husband just told me you were at art of animation. So I don't know if you all know what hotel you're at. I think you guys need to figure your, yourselves out. Anyway, Yachtsman is a really good restaurant. I would agree. Uh, and you know what the funny part is, is that we got, we each got a steak. I think Kathy got the filet. Of course I got like the prime rib which just melted in my mouth. And the funny part is we each got like one of the yachtsman sides and the guy goes, you might be able to share it. One of the sides. Yeah. Well, well, Kathy and I, you know, we hear the term might We're like, okay, we'll just get two sides. Then we'll, we'll kind of pick off each other. No, 
you could have had a meal off of the sides. Really? Oh, they were they were big. I mean, granted, you know, they're probably this big, but you know, big dish. I mean, it was more than just a side. I mean, seriously. I mean, it was one was this macaroni and cheese that. Oh my god, it was so good. Oh, and I and I got I got cream spinach. I like cream spinach. And it was so. Mm, oh my gosh! It was. My mouth is. Excuse me while I deal with the me salivating because I'm thinking about it. It's so good. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just really it has huge portions. And I will tell you, I mean, you know, I got a call from the credit card company afterwards saying, "Did you really spend this much on dinner?" I said, "Yes, I did." Really? Like, oh, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. But it was that it was it was quite it was quite pricey. But we knew it going in. Again, remember that whole budgeting thing that I talked about at the beginning of the show? Yeah. Yeah. This is where that falls right into place. Uh, give me one last tip, Danny. Oh, before you do, I got. I'll do the last tip, or at least on my side. You you can finish this up. I know that Disney's Magical Express will pick you up three hours before your flight, and I know that for a lot of people that seems excessive. And for a single for a single traveler such as Danny, it might be a lot of extra time because he doesn't have to worry about other, anybody else other than himself. There are a lot of people that try to shorten that time by taking an Uber or hiring a car and saying being picked up 90 minutes beforehand. That's too close. Or even two hours beforehand. You know, it's just one of those things. So here's the thing. Biggest mistake I've ever, I've, I've heard people, you know, talk about is saying I'm Good. I'm. I'm not going to go three hours beforehand. I'm going to go two hours beforehand because I. They. They say they don't need it. It's a big mistake, folks. Let me tell you why. You can't control the traffic. That's one thing. Second part, you can't control TSA. That's another. And the third part is, I would much rather be waiting on the other side of security than looking at my watch every two minutes because I'm on. The wrong side of security that is a very nerve-wracking feeling <laughs> it is and 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 i know that you've you've run into that by mistake a couple times i've showed up 15 minutes before a flight takes off. yeah and and that's very very nerve-wracking and um you know me like when i'm when i'm traveling i like to get to the airport like in the parking lot of the airport two hours before my flight boards now that basically means that it's about 90 minutes before I fly or, you know, a little bit, a little bit more time. I allow myself a little bit more time because I'm traveling from, you know, to when I'm traveling to Chicago, especially like O'Hare, I never know what kind of traffic I'm going to run into. It's plain and simple. So I try to plan for it. I'm, I don't know what kind of line I'm going to run into. So it's just one of those things. I try to just, be really early and I enjoy the airport. I know it sounds silly, but that's traveler. And if you're traveling with young kids, you're going to need more time. Anyway, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need time to go to the bathroom. You're going to need time to get a snack. You're going to need time to get everything taken care of where you, you know, if you're, if you're checking in bags, if you didn't check them in with, with magical express, mm-hmm. allow the three hours. S- seriously, it'll, it'll be to your favor. And, and, and I'll tell you one thing, even though people have like, like Mary mentions, you know, we have TSA pre-check and it helps a lot and that's great. Not ever, not a lot of people do. I mean, if you think about it, the vast majority, if of you don't people, fly enough, it's not worth it. It's not just if you don't fly enough, if you don't fly enough at the airports that offer it is the other story. Oh, not every airport f- offers pre TSA pre-check. Right? No, I don't no. think I've ever flown into it. Indy did Ch- Midway did. Nork does, Atlantic City does. I'm surprised not everybody because if Atlantic City, that's like in the middle of a cornfield and they offer it. There's a lot more airports are offering it now than they did say five years ago. But like that know, new business, Clear or something along the lines that, of that. That was kind of I a feel joke. like the, what? I was gonna say that's kind of more of a joke these days because it was like Is it? Well, that's definitely it's not like a super TSA pre check. Yeah, I mean and every one of them is like you know, a premium offering. I mean, you have to pay for those things and you kind of, oh, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, is that, um, I'm not, I mean, if you think you're going to get 
your use out of it, please do it. It'll be very worthwhile. Um, but it's not for everybody, and it's not at every airport. Smaller airports tend to not have it. When I say smaller airports, I'm talking, you know, bluegrass field down near Lexington, Kentucky that has one gate. You know, you go to Poughkeepsie, you know, Poughkeepsie Airport, which has all of three gates or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah these are places I've been. So, <laughs> you know, places where all they have are prop jobs coming in, and basically you, you get into the airplane and you have the pilot go up and sit in the seat. He flips his scarf back, yells back, buckle up, baby. We're about ready to take <laughs> off. And don't you dare think that I'm exaggerating. So it's just right. one of those things. Yeah. I've got one more tip, and then we have one off question to answer before we end. Okay. So my last tip would be don't be afraid to use an Uber, people. They're not going to murder you. I agree. That is a Danny tip of the day. 99.9% .9 of the time, you are going to be perfectly safe. Um, it was a, it's a, granted that's a one ten per, ten, tenth of a percent of the time, but it's probably you never else. know. You never. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, I mean, because you can never. Nothing's a hundred percent. You know, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, you're going to be perfectly safe. Um, if it's a, an extremely busy day, or if it's an extremely hot day, and you could see the buses are already behind, don't don't be afraid to spend the ten bucks to go and take the Uber. It's it's honestly. I mean, you don't have to be like me and take Uber all the time because it does get pricey. And my next trip, when it comes up between now and, you know, the summertime, as Chris would say, um, you know, I will probably scale back on the Ubers a little bit. But just don't be afraid. They're not the end of the world. And tip them nicely. Yes, yes. They, they, they do live off the tips. Um, where was it? Where was it? It was uh, all right. So this is the final question of the night. What's your favorite Disney restaurant? So let, since we have a few minutes, give me breakfast, sit down, lunch, quick service, and a dinner, sit down, and an optional dessert. Um, for breakfast, Tusker House. I really enjoy it. Uh, and I do like to get there when they also change the food out so I get a little bit of brunchish action. Um, lunch, counter service. Oh, that's harder. I'm going to say. Really? What? Think about this. You really have to think about a lunch quick service? Well, there's so many I really do enjoy. But But there should be one. Well, I don't know what you're thinking, but like, unless you think it might. It's like, a nugget. It's a nugget. I'm going to let you figure this out. I ain't helping you. Well, you have a song for the item. We have a t-shirt. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, do I need to go with t Wait a second. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me, let's say, I love Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets, but it's not my absolute favorite place to go get lunch. It's not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm shocked. I know. I, 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 I hey, am listen. shocked. No, 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 no. I love Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets. In fact, you know, the, the whole the whole thing I have to say about Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets really actually, um, it, it really comes down to this. This episode of the Behind Ears Podcast is not brought to you by... Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets. That's right, Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets only found at Casey's Corner. They're small, awesome little nuggets of hot dog and breadedness. It is so good. You want to get a whole bunch of them with fries. That's right, Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets. Get them with ketchup, get them with mustard, get them with cheese. Just get them. You can share, although it's going to be really hard to do so. Go ahead and get them as you wait for the fireworks show. Get them as you wait for a parade. Get them as you walk out of the park and enjoy them with a friend ah who am i kidding just enjoy them that's right casey's corn dog nuggets available over at casey's corner we just lost that sponsor because chris did not use them as the quick service no the thing is <laughs> I, I will tell you this probably my probably my favorite uh i will tell you that i think probably my my favorite quick serve is um 
it, it still really has got to be something like Cosmic Rays. I mean, the sense of overall, mm-hmm. everything, I, I like everything there. I mean, I will go, see, the thing is, I'll, I can go to K- Casey's Corner for Corn Dog Nuggets, like, literally two minutes after I've eaten anywhere else, just because, well, they're that awesome. Yeah. Um, and I and I and I've been known to go to Casey's Corner for corn dog nuggets frequently during a trip, so it's not really a problem. That's why I was not necessarily considering that. Um, I will say this though: their hot dogs have gotten better ever since they switched back to regular hot dog buns. I will say, fair enough. In fact, in fact, dinner, a, a dinner. Um, Oh, I'm I'm gonna say Kelly Girl. It's always been my favorite. I'm just gonna have to do that. It's as simple as that. As much as I said, you were looking, so I had to mouth it. <laughs> okay, so one of those things. I I, I know I said I'd love the Yachtsman Steakhouse, and I absolutely do. Kelly Girl is still my favorite because it's just you know between the dishes that they offer, the the seasonals menus, and the service is absolutely top notch. My choices. What are yours? Any dessert for you? Oh, dessert. Um, Beaches and cream. You know, I still love going over to um, the Pineapple and I over at uh, oh. the, over the Poly and get myself a good Dole Whip. I, and actually, I think their Dole Whip is better, uh, a little healthier serving than over at um, the Sunshine Tree Terrace over by um, um, the Tiki Room. So that's just my choice. So this is really tough. I really love a lot of food there. And I also dislike a lot of food there. I Where? guess I'm a snob. All right. I have a few. I, I I I know a few people just heard me call myself a snob, and they all were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, "Breakfast." I'm gonna say you said Tusker, so I'm not gonna go with that. Um, Ohana, the little uh, Tonga toast. Oh, you, oh, you mean mm. going to not not Ohana? That's that. No, no, you're thinking that's either you're either doing Captain Cook or you're doing um, Kona Cafe. Kona. I like Kona upstairs. And, yeah. and they eat a little because they put a little bacon on the side too. Um go. quick serve lunch. <sighs> That's a tough one. I'm gonna get back to the quick service lunch. Okay. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Dinner, I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna shock some. Oh no. That's so easy, my my afternoon quick service lunch. I'm going to Tangerine Cafe, I was, was going to say, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> why is he not going to his go-to? I, I don't I don't lie to my fans. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tangerine Cafe, as long as Raquel's there, I need to get my, my, double, my double beef. Um, dinner, there's so much. Places to eat. Um, I'm gonna probably get the butcher's block and head on over to Polite Pig. I'm still on a very heavy Polite Pig right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying that. I got to get back to that. Uh, dessert. So some people who know me will say I like to get the bloodiest <laughs> piece of prime rib at 1900 because I don't really like dessert. But I'm gonna throw. Uh, I'm gonna go Sleepy Hollow. And I'm going to get the Nutella with strawberries and blueberries on a waffle. But make sure you ask for whipped cream because it's not as good without the whipped cream. That would be my selection. I kind of feel like I want to change the breakfast, though. But I don't know to what. Because I think Disney breakfast is terrible. They have the worst eggs. I don't think... I don't think Disney breakfast is terrible. But I do think that it's also the least value for your money. Yeah, and the Bacon is disgusting. Now, you can just give me a platter of the sausage patties and the Mickey shaped waffles, and I'm I'm Gucci. But I'll tell you what, this is the one thing. I've always enjoyed the breakfast platter over at uh Whispering Canyon Cafe. The bounty one, the, the bounty the platter. Big, the big bounty platter. It's an all you can eat type yeah. of thing. It's got a little bit of everything. The breakfast over at Trails End over at Fort Wilderness is also really good, and there's usually never a crowd. And the one that I haven't tried yet that I would like to try is the, was it the Bon Voyage breakfast over at Boardwalk, the restaurant over? There. I can't remember the name of the Boardwalk, but it's kind of it's kind of themed like you know tangled theme, so to speak. And it's supposedly everybody's been saying it's really super good. And I really would like to try it and I may try it, you know, maybe this, you know, one of my next couple trips. Um, because sometimes, you know, you say that, you know, di- you don't care for Disney breakfast. The fact of the matter is, is that I sometimes think that 
we haven't tried everywhere that has a good breakfast. You're, all right, mark my words. The next trip that we get to do, we have to go to Olivia's at Cape May. Or oh, no, Cape May. Cape, no, no, over Olivia, at, Olivia's, uh, Olivia's over at Old Key West. Okay. What is, where's Cape May? That's over at uh, the Beach Club. And I love beach. I don't know which one I want now. Cape, Cape May Cafe and their and and their breakfast, um, the character breakfast they have there is by far one of the one of the best. But I think if you want a really good breakfast with great service and a great atmosphere, Olivia's Olivia's, Olivia's over at Old Key West is just a phenomenal find. They're the key line. I've never been to Old Key West. Oh, dude! You know what? We will remedy that situation here soon. Okay. I don't know when, but I'm just saying soon because, you know, this is the yeah. latest cases. Because um, I will say that the Key Lime um, Eggs Benedict. Um, oh, that's fabulous. Oh, and their banana bread French toast. It bypasses the digestive system and turns directly into body fat. It is so rich and wonderful. Just saying. All, All right. right. But you know what? We've Why talked. You take us away here? We've talked too much. heard the show and we hope you want more well feel free to join us over at our social media platforms instagram and our facebook page can be found at behind the ears podcast our web page is behind the ears podcast.net and our email is behind the ears podcast at gmail.com and our twitter handle is at behind the ears pc and come and join the conversation about all things disney over at the wdw community page don't forget to rate and review the show over at itunes or apple Podcasts, as it really helps us get the word out about the show also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Home. And that was another live recording of Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny. That was Mr. Chris. Thank you all for joining us live. Whether you watched us, you listened to us, Maybe you're watching the replay. Maybe it's tomorrow. Ooh, kind of freaky. Um, thanks. Seriously, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. Keep sharing the show out. Keep spreading the word. Uh, keep downloading. Keep doing it all. If you haven't gone over to iTunes in a more recent time, uh, we're getting close to that hundred mark of reviews. So if you know you guys want to be helpful, if you haven't done that yet, it literally takes a few seconds. It helps uh, people find the show that much easier. Don't forget to follow us on all the social media platforms. Trisha would kill me if I didn't rec- tell everybody to join the WDW community. And uh, with that being said, everybody, have a safe and wonderful weekend. But before I go, I want to wish Jessica um, and Nick um, and all our other runners from the WDW community and all the other runners a safe and wonderful weekend running in wine and dine um stay hydrated uh when you think you can't go anymore just know that i once wore a tutu and found a smoking section on a 5k at disney so that should motivate you all to keep going with that being said i am uncle danny tuck your kids inside wear your seatbelts and have a wonderful weekend until next week I don't think I can really follow up with that with anything real without actually busting out laughing. So I'm just going to say thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. We can't wait until we talk to you again next week. But until we meet again, we hope that you have an absolutely magical day. Take care.